Okay, so I would share my screen now. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen. Okay, great. So I'm now going to trade back there for people that have joined earlier, that joined the last session, which was like one month ago. <laughs> so if you joined the last session, did you solve any of the practice questions that was posted? And Prince, I'm looking at you. Did you solve those practice questions we shared? They were in the GitHub repo. It's just part of, we, we talked about, okay, so for those that didn't join last week, we talked about strings and arrays last week. We went through just quick tips and quick overview about it. You know, what to look out for when working with strings, when working with arrays, facts about them. And we solved some practice questions, just like I said earlier in breakout rooms. And the session was recorded and it's on the GitHub repo. So even if you missed it, you can always, you know, catch up with it over there. So for today, Oh, you solved the practice questions. Interesting. Prince and Z. I hope I'm pronouncing that well. <laughs> if I'm not, I'm sorry. Um, you, you solved the practice question. So why did you send us your PR? I didn't see your PR. I didn't see your pull request showing us your solutions and pointing out adding your solutions. Why didn't you send that? That's question for you. So moving on today. We are going to be talking about ash tables and welcome to today's session. So quick overview again. I'm not going to be going in depth because we have limited time, but I would always I share resources on where you can read more about it, where you can you know have the broad understanding about what these things are. So this is just going to be a run through. This is just going to be a refresher, kind of a crash course for like 20 minutes. So what are hash tables? Literally, hash tables are just keys, values mapped together. So you're just mapping a key to a particular value. And this is done using hash functions, tree process called hashing. So literally what happens is when you give a key, say the name of the key is John or a particular name, John Smith, like you can see in the picture here, the hash function does this, you know, calculation or something that produces an hash value, different from the value you want to store. It produces that hash value called hash or whatever. And then based on that hash value, most times it's used an, as an index into something called buckets. So these buckets are kind of like arrays, contiguous arrays that have limited space. And based on the index that has been pointed out in the hash function, you are able to locate where you want to store that value, the value that you gave this time around. So th that key is mapped to the value using the hash function that produces a kind of index, blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> that looks like a lot more really simple and you can always read more about it if you don't know so much about what these things are. Now, basically when you hear something called key value pair, they're talking about hash table. And this is always used because it's, it's kind of fast to insert into this thing and very fast when it comes to searching. So basically, if you have an interview question, first thing you should even point out in your head is always, how can I use hash table to make this easier? It's like the top of one data structure you would use in most of your interviews. It's super helpful, very efficient when it comes to searching for things. And that is where we use it. And hash table is just the broad topic. It's just like the parents. It's called several things in different languages. And there are different types of, like there are two, common types of hash tables. We have the hash set and the hash map. I'll come back to that later. Now, key, co key concepts about what I've just mentioned, we hear about hash function. That's the function that is being used to map a key to the index of that specific bucket. So it's not 
the hash function is not going to map that your key to the value. What it does is it takes your key and using that key, it creates a kind of hash. It creates a kind of hash value that is an index that will point to a particular bucket where you have to store both the key and the value. That's like literally the way it works. And an example of a simple hash function could be, oh, when you give me X as the key, do X modulus five, or maybe X modulus the length of the array or the length of the table you want to store your things in. And whatever value it gives to you, which would be Y, would be that index you used to like go look for where you want to store that thing. So the whole point is that this is super easy when you want to search back, when you give me this um, key you are looking for, I can always compute this again and just get the index. That's literally what it does. So when you give me this key, I'm looking for this key, it just puts it into that, uh, um, that function again, get the index of where you stored both the key and the value and it finds it in the bucket. So super easy. And the process of doing this is what's called hashing, and it's a one-way function. That's why I said, whether you want to store, whether you want to get it back, it still uses this function. So it doesn't do, oh, I've stored the index or I've stored this value somewhere. Now I can revert it back to be able to get the exact key or something like, oh, when you give me a value, I should be able to get key. No, literally, when you only have to give me a key and I can, I can give you the value back. And there is probability, you know, the way I've just said it now, look at it, I am saying, this is a simple hash function. You give me X modulus five. It's very possible that I would always have two hash values. So I, it's possible for me to, if you give me, for this example now, if you give me 10 modulus five, it's gonna give me zero. And if you give me 15 modulus five, it's gonna give me zero also. So both of them are gonna give me the same hash value. That is what we call hash collision. So we are having a key that produces, and um, we're having two keys that produces the same hash value. And there's no confusion as to how do you, you know, preserve that uniqueness on where, where this is being stored. So that's something you should read about also. I'm not going in depth about it. There are ways on how people, how they've solved collision issues. There have been collision resolution um, ways or agendas people have pushed forward. But that's something you should also look into because depending on how your interview goes, your interviewer may be very interesting in this thing. I've been in an interview before where they asked me, I'll give me an example of how you, you can resolve an hash collision. That was a question. And another question could be, oh, give an example of hash function. What does hash function mean to you? So it's important to understand these different concepts. You never can tell what your interview can look like. Not all interviews are algorithm and data structure straight off. And so I mentioned hash set and hash map earlier. Hash map literally is the normal key value pair, we you know, the normal way where you store data using key and values. But for hash sets, what happens is that there is no value. Like, how would I put it? There is, okay, it's called values. There is no, you are not giving me key value pair. You are just giving me a particular value and it is being stored. So it's a set in such a way that they are like just number, just the way you put your arrays. It's just one particular value there. But on that it, it uses this map data structure, this hash map data structure, where when you give it a particular you know value, it just takes that value as the key. Like it takes how do I put it? It takes that value as a particular as the key and points it to a list of occurrences of that value so it doesn't store um it doesn't store um i would have it it doesn't store repeated keys when you give it to it when you, when you give it a repeated value it doesn't store it all it's just trying to do is keep whatever key you have keep um, keep whatever value you gave it to it as a key and i don't know whatever it maps it to but whenever you give it that same value again 
it's not going to store it as a key. It checks that the key is already present and it just throws it away. So that's why it is very good for when you want to check for duplicate values, because you can just keep appending your things there. It doesn't store the duplicates. It checks that, oh, this value in this case that I'm talking about when it comes to assets is like key map for hash map it looks at it and says oh i've seen this value before and i've stored it already as a key so i'm going to throw this next one away so it doesn't allow duplicate values and it's very good when you want to maintain uniqueness of something like when they say oh giving a list of arrays please return the list back to us removing all the duplicates so super easy just pour your things into assets and just return whatever the assets gave to you and for hash map, it is super useful when you want to store more information. So assets in this case, whenever you feel like, it also does the um, very fast insertion and searching. So you can always use assets, but more or less like if you, want, you use assets when you don't need key value, you just need a value, but you want to be able to get it or search for it faster the way you do in hash map use assets, but when you feel like, oh, we need to store more information, we want to keep a particular key, map to either a list of values or either a lot of values, you use hash map. So that's like the basic difference between both. And so, because I've just talked about hash set and hash map, let me go over quickly on ways to identify hash table questions because what happens is most times you will see an interview question or you will see even in real life problems see hash hash tables are very very important in your day-to-day -day life if you literally write complex algorithms or you even if it's not complex like simple algorithms in your day-to-day -day life hash table is like super important i can't count how many times i use it whenever i have to do any simple task because so literally nobody's going to tell you this is an hash table question or use hash table for it you have to literally think about it and say oh i'm seeing this pattern i'm seeing this thing this looks like i can use hash table for this i can use hash map for this i can use a search for this you are the one that's supposed to bring that hope in your mind. You're the one that's supposed to identify that pattern. So you're not going to see it explicitly that, okay, use an ash table or use an ash map to do this. Nobody's going to do that. Most times you don't see it. So when you have a question or when you see, what do you see? What are the things you look for that gives you that, you know, insight or that gives you that, that mindset that, okay, this is beginning to look like I should use ash map here or use ash set here. Now, when you see something like, oh, check if an item has been visited or checked before. So most times they won't write it that way. But it's like, oh, can you detect if this is present or can you detect if um, something is, is, is a duplicate? So you have to check if an item has been visited or checked before. And you know you're going to need it in the future, like why you are going through an array, if you have an array or a list. This is an opportunity to use HashMap. When they say, when you have to check if an item is being unique, you want to you know, know the uniqueness of something, or you want to check the uniqueness of a list, or the uniqueness of items in a list, you want to count the occurrence of something, you use HashMap here. Yeah? Or you want to check if a list or array contains a duplicate, you use either hash set, either hash map, depending on the scenario. When you are using nested for loop, when you realize that, oh, you're solving a question and you're using a for loop two times that goes over the same list, the same, like the same elements. So let's say you have a list that contains one to five elements and you realize that you're using a nested for loop. The first for loop goes one to five. The second for loop goes one to five most times, or even if it's like the next to five, most times you probably want to rethink how can I use an hash map to do this or an hash set to do this. You need to think about that. Or when you need to search for something, when you need to aggregate information, you want to pack information together, can okay, you make use of an hash map in this place? And the last one, I'm not going to talk much about it. So forget it if you don't understand what it means. Majorly, when you're working with dynamic programming, we'll talk about it later, later in this series most times you have to use hash map and now i've been saying hash map 
as stable assets. These things are called different things in different programming languages. So you need to know what it is called in your language. I do C sharp a lot, and I know hash maps are called dictionaries, assets are called assets in C sharp. So in your language or what language do you use? Do you want to you know tell us what it is called in your language? Anybody? Well, in Python, it's actually called uh, dictionaries and sets. Interesting. Java. What about the Java guys? Nice. Thanks for so, telling us. Yeah. So in Java, it's called um, yeah hash map. Hmm. Nice. What about sets? Hello, is anyone telling, about, telling us about Java? Yeah, so set, I think set also is, um, is hash sets. Um, okay. that is in, I, know, I, know, I know of C sharp as hash set, and also yeah. in Java, Java is also uh, either set or hash set, I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. Any other language, JavaScript, what about JavaScript? JavaScript is actually something else. <laughs> Anyone uses JavaScript here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think um, hash. Hash just goes for probably the hash. Uh, I think hash table. Hash table. In JavaScript? Yes. Mm. I think hash sets is hash sets in JavaScript. Really? So, but what about hash map? Hash map for dictionaries? Hash maps are objects. <laughs> yeah, because I've heard of something like that. And I was like, okay, JavaScript is words. Why would you call dictionaries or hash map objects? <laughs> Leave it for <false> like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks everyone for that contribution. So now we at least have an idea of Is someone saying something. Okay, so now at least we have an idea of what it is called in several languages. So some few things to note. Wait before no, note about this things, this hash map, hash table asset. Just like I said, hash table is just like the parents come putting everything together. Now, space complexity. Most times when you have to use hash table, you are literally storing every of the elements in either that array or that list. So most times the space complexity is order of N. Super, super important. Note that so that whenever you see an interview question and they say, don't use extra space. So forget about your hash table. Because most times what used to happen is that that question, is already giving you a trait of you can use an hash table here, you can use an hash map here, and you're already jumping into okay, I found the solution. When they say you can't use extra space, please, I'm sorry, you have to let go of your dearly beloved hash map. You can use it. So the space complexity is most times out of hand. Now, the time complexity generally and industri industry wide. We kind of take it as the time complexity is constant time, and which is why we so so love using hash map <laughs> and hash table. It's like everywhere. It's so sweet <laughs> because generally we just think that the time complexity is constant time. But the truth is that worst case it could be other of n. Because take for example the earlier hash function I mentioned, where we say y equal to x mod five. So what if I have an array and everything in that array is in multiples of five? So we have 10, 15, 20, 25. What, would, what do you think all the hash value would be? The hash value would be the same thing because the hash value would be everything mode five. Multiples of five mode five is zero. So everything would be mapped to an index of zero. And when, whenever I need to search, it's going to have to search through 
all everything in that bucket that is in that index. So at that time, the worst case is like other of them. But we tend to always believe that, you know, these dictionaries, ash map, inbuilt, you know, ash tables that your language provides to you, the kind of use the best ash functions, they are not going to use y equal to x mod 5. Like I mentioned, that's like too simple. So most of them, they use a very sophisticated ash function such that it is very rare to get those ash collisions I mentioned or I talked about. So that's why we just believe that this is a rare case where we have, you know, too many items, too many keys mapped to the same ash value. It's like a rare case. So you are free, free to always say it is, you know, constant time. But when you're in, inter in an interview, try to always mention that, okay, the amort amortized time complexity is other of one. I mean, the interviewer would just know that, okay, it looks like this girl, this person is, this person is, this person knows they are doing, you know? <laughs> so just feel free to always add that amortized time complexity. And also try to know, try to implement one in your language. If you go to, I had that one resource, I'm going to share it again. And it's a lead code kind of explore resource. It's a very nice, I don't know, lead code did, Let's code is very nice in that area. They have this different cards. You can learn about these things in depth. Now, one of the one of the problems or one of the things you have to go through in that lesson is creating ash map assets yourself. So try implementing one so that you know how this thing works under the hood. It's very nice to do that. Also, know how collisions are handled in hash tables. So examples of, okay, how are collisions handled? How does collision work? And like, what are example of cases or what are example ways collisions are being handled? You should look at that part. You should read about collisions. It's super important. Some people, I said it earlier, your interview may not always go the way you want. I've been in an interview before where we just talked about data structures. There was no question. We're just ramp, like just going about, oh, what do you understand about linked list? Okay, what do you now understand about Q? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so what about stack? Can you tell me a bit more? That was that, that was the interview was going. So it was just testing my knowledge of data structures. So you never can tell. Now, you should also understand and remember that Ash tables, as said, they do not maintain the order of insertion. So whenever the order of something is important, you can use Ash map. I'm so sorry. And that was precious. I'll get to your question in a minute. That was also another interview question I had one time where they were like, when is like, when is it better to use a list or an array over an Ash map? Now that question seems, are you kidding me? It is, when would it ever be better to use a list of an ash map? And the answer is whenever the order of insertion is important. So ash maps, ash sets, ash tables, generally they don't maintain your order of insertion. Imagine the hash function that just, you know, put things everywhere. So as you are putting things into it, it doesn't you know, um, keep that order at which you are putting or inserting it. So whenever you need that order being preserved, you can use hash map. Think about another data structure. So now they are named differently in several programming languages. So know what it is named in whatever programming language you want to use. And people here today have given you help uh, on whatever it is called in several languages. And also know how common operations work. How do you insert? How do you, I'll go into that. So back to your question, Precious, you said, I should repeat about the amortized space complexity. So what I mean is it's an average case. So literally, generally it is known that in certain, um, in certain and searching, like when you have to search in an hash map. It's like a general question. They'll be like, oh, what's the time complexity of searching in a hash map or searching in an asset? Literally, generally, we all say it is constant time, but it is amortized in the sense that 
it may not always be constant time, depending on the hash function being used. So like I said earlier, our first, now let me see if I can go back here. Yeah. yeah, coming back to this place, see this hash function I mentioned, I was like, the hash function says the key, which is X mode five, should give you the hash value. This is not the value that you want to store. This is hash value. Now the hash value points to the index of wherever you want to store that value, that key and value. So that is like literally the way it works. So this hash function now, if you give it an array that contains all the keys, where all the keys are multiples of five, like 10, 15, 20, 25. Now 10 mode five will give you what? Zero. 20 mode five will give you what? Zero. You know, mode is like um, the, the, the remainder, not the, the, the division, the remainder. So if you do 20 divided by five, what remains zero? So that's why the 20 mod five is zero. Now, all these multiples of five will give you zero, meaning this hash value is going to point to an index somewhere of zero. The index will be zero. And every of the value that's related to those keys are going to be stored in that zero index. So whenever you give it that same key and you say, oh, search for me, you assume you're supposed to search in constant time, right? But by the time it searches, it realizes that in that index, so there are several values say, still in that index. So it literally still has to search through those values again to get to the one you are looking for. So that's why I said, in worst case, where there is a bad hash function like this one, that bad hash function will give us a bad search time. So that's just it. If you don't understand Hi. like well so well, oh, I have uh, is someone asking a question. Yeah, say come sign, come sign. Or how come me? Okay. I think it's just it needs to be muted. Okay. So if you don't understand much about it, I have the resources at the end that explain a lot about, you know, ash collision, what they mean. Understanding that ash collision will make you understand why we say worst case could be order of n, but generally we assume it is always constant time. So feel free to always use that. <laughs> so common operations you should also note is how to check if it contains a particular key. I mean, that's the whole point <clears throat> of why we use this thing, where we can search in constant time. <clears throat> So know how it works in whatever language you want to use. How do you search if it contains? How do you hard? How do you insert? How do you get the length? And for hash maps, you can always get all keys at a time and get all values at a time. That's the way it does that. You should check that. And how to iterate. And this brings me to the quick end of my short overview. I'm sorry if I rushed it, if you don't know so much about how these things work. I'm sorry if I rushed it on you. And I have resources where you can use to learn more. This video, I had every single thing to about GitHub rep already, so you would find it there. This video is the one, you know, cracking the code interview author actually talked about. She explained it in depth, so you should check the video also. And the card I talked about in this code where they do, they give you this whole thing in, in depth. It's kind of short and also in depth. So it's like a crash course, real crash course. You should actually check it out. I make use of it a lot. Super nice. They give you exercises, how to create an hash map, how to create hash table. They give you also lead code exercises that relate to that topic. So you should check it out too. And we are gonna be going to breakout rooms right now. I think I already created the breakout rooms. I just need to probably open them up. When you get to your breakout room, Always remember to interact. Remember our problem solving process. Repeat the problem. Ask questions. Draw out your own example to be able to understand what they are trying to say. And feel free to always start with the brute force solution. Brute force solution may always be nested for loops when you're working with that table. And then you realize that, oh, I can use an hash table for this. And so, so, so. So the breakout rooms are these, and these are the questions you're going to be solving in your breakout rooms. Most times you're going to solve one, but it's just like if you guys are all super good and you all know this already, you can always feel free to go to the next question. So 
I'm going to open the breakout room now and you should help yourselves to those breakout rooms. Yeah, it's opened right now. If you are having trouble getting assigned or joining any breakout room, just let me know and I can assign you automatically. So right now you will meet your facilitators in those rooms. And yeah. And okay, so I'm going to pause this recording. So for you that will be listening to the recording, we are going to breakout rooms now. I want to make it a safe space, so we are not going to be recording the breakout rooms. I'm so sorry, but it's just people solving questions in the breakout rooms. Yeah, I'm so sorry we don't record breakout rooms. Okay. So those that have been listening to the recorded call, we are done with the breakout rooms now. People are coming back to the main session. And again, sorry for not, <laughs> for not recording the breakout rooms for you. So now everyone is back. I hope you enjoyed the breakout rooms. I hope you learned a lot. And I'm sorry if you didn't have enough time to finish your questions or to finish the you know, solutions. Your facilitator should be able to share you a link that contains the solution if you didn't finish. Or I think you have access to the code space, um, code, code share link or whatever you guys used in the room. So, while I'm going to throw it back to someone to tell me how they enjoyed the room today, I want you to give us your feedback and how about how this went for you. How did you enjoy this today? I'm going to drop it on the chat. And another point is to check out our repo solve the practice questions right now i have we have our tables there already and these are practice questions for you aside from the one you solved today in your breakout rooms there are tons of questions that was unpicked so a lot of efforts went into picking out these questions so this is in addition to some questions you will meet the resources i shared they are like overlap for some. So, but ask from you is please solve these questions. Even if it's one or two you are solving, as you solve them, send us a PR, clone this. So we, in the front page of this, I have this resource on how you can contribute to repository. It explains what you need to do, forking the repo, cloning it, making your changes, and then submitting a PR. So please submit a PR for us. Add your solutions to this place with the naming convention, more or less like the name of the problem and your username. Send it to us and let us you know, give you comments as needed. And also get to contribute to your solution to repository that is going to be used by you don't know how many people so yeah that's hacks from me to everyone here so now i'm back to asking you questions before we round up or before we finish today does anyone wants to you know do you want to say anything ask any question make any comments have any concerns please let us know Anyone wants to say something? No. Well, I do. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Um. Yeah. So I think for me, uh, the breakout rooms are really helpful because you get to see things from a different perspective. 
um, like aside your solution, like because again, if you're thinking in one direction, someone else or the instructor might give a different direction as to which you can approach the problem. Nice. And which will most likely have a better um, time complexity and space complexity than the direction you're thinking in, really. Nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's cool. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, so anyone else? We have a few minutes and I can give that back to you. <laughs> this is just a moment for you to you know, relax, take some time, breath, breath, breath hair, breath hair. I know the breakout rooms might have been, you know, summer challenging and a lot. So just take some moments to relax and <laughs> this is the end of the day right now but not the end of solving questions please go back and solve the nice awesome unpicked solution and um, problems we have here there are some nice nice problems and if you have any questions as regards to those problems let us know you can drop it on the slack channel you can send us a mail if the slack channel doesn't work for you because I can see that nobody responds on the Slack channel. It looks like people don't like to send messages on Slack channel. Ritsiana, do you want to say anything? I want to say something that uh, I really enjoy. It is my first time. and it was Oh, nice. Welcome. Make it so interactive or make it so easy for us and explain very well for us. So I'm so happy. Thank you for the opportunity. No worries. I hope you come back again. This is every two weeks. This happens every two weeks. So please put it in your calendar. Every two weeks, same time, same place on Zoom with different links. <laughs> but put it in your calendar and always join the meetup. Always be on the meetup so that you can get the Zoom link. Yeah. So, okay, now I'm going to ask a random question. For those that, I understand that for some people, this is their first time here. For those that are just coming, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so happy to have you and we hope you come back next time. Now, for those that have been attending the session, or especially those that attended last one, we gave some questions on strings and arrays. So, who has solved those practice questions? And why did you send us your PR of your solution? These were the questions. Or do you have any issue with those questions shared? This was the string and area ones. Do you have any issue with any of the questions that were shared uh, or you know what happened? And I can call names because at least I recognize people that came back here. That was here last week. Okay, I can't recognize. <laughs> Just very few. Oh. Okay, no worries. I'll take it as some people just, you know, Either I solved it or they have not had the time to solve it. No worries. I'm hoping that you're going to solve the practice. So you don't have to solve everything. Just make sure you solve one or two of the practice questions we've shared today. For ash tables, look for pick up a question, solve something. Oluwa Kemi, do you want to say something? Yes, yeah, sorry to cut. This is also my first time here. So I was asking the link to join the Slack channel with me. I, I, I chat. Oh, okay. Um, let me quickly find the link. Okay, this. Mm, come in. Uh, Garim, I'm gonna get to your question in a minute. Okay, so yeah, this is the Slack channel. So for adding solutions to the repository. So literally, what we want you to do is um. Where is the repository? So if you clone this, you fork the repository first. You get to this place, you fork it. Then when you fork it, it forks the repository in your own 
like in your own GitHub space. Now in that GitHub space, you can now clone it on your computer or you can even edit it directly. Yeah, I me, mean, I do edit directly yeah? because what happens is if I solve a question on lead code, right? All I'm just gonna do is I would, once I have this in my repository, in, um, in my space, in my GitHub space. So this is my own GitHub space right now. Now, once I have forked the repository, it is in my GitHub space right now, and I want to hide my solution. So if I had solved any, anything on lead code, I'm just going to like copy the solution. I just copy the entire thing. This is in C sharp, so dot CS. I'll just come here and I create the solution here. So we want put the solution in what's called practice solution. It's a folder under each of those sections. So you just, put your solution. So for me, I am very lazy. So I just do every single thing on this place. I just go to this place. I just go to add file, you see, create new file. And I'm just going to name it the, let's say group anagrams dot, okay. And my username and I'll say dot CS because I'm using C sharp. If you're using Java, it's going to be maybe dot, I don't know what they're using Java, dot Java or something, dot Python, dot Py or this thing. So um, I'm just going to copy my solution from somewhere, whatever the solution is. I'll just copy and paste every single thing here. So like if it was this, suppose I'd put a solution here, I'm just going to put, I'm just going to copy. Uh, let's see. GitHub repo. Yeah, I'm just going to copy and paste it here. Let's say it was a solution. And I'm copying from this code, I'm adding it, and I'm just going to commit directly. This is on GitHub, like because I'm too lazy to clone it on my own desktop or something. Since I've run it on lead code and I know it works, put comments also. That's super important so that you can help someone. So, literally, what you're just trying to do is help someone else tomorrow when they come to the repository and they're like okay i'm trying to look for solutions to this problem i am trying and like stacy said even if you know the solution to a problem getting perspective from other people how they were able to approach the solution you're like oh this person did it this way that's the whole aim here yeah. if you have if we have a lot of solutions from a lot of people you get to see different perspectives different ways people approach a problem in that space so that's the whole aim here so when you commit the new file so uh i'm going to call this group anagram so it doesn't confuse anyone i'm just going to remove this so and i commit the new file so now i have that file in my own this is still in my own space right if i now want to send it to women who code lagos like if you want to send it to the pr you have to create the pull request so um let me see, can I create a pull request? Because right now I am kind of working on the space directly. Oh, I didn't forget you. So I'm a contributor and I'm working on it directly. That's the problem. So, but let's say, let's assume I had forked the repository. That would have been my whole space. That would have been what it looked like. And it would automatically tell me that, A, you are like ahead of the repository. Do you want to send a pull request to send you something like that here? And you just create, press create and pull request and it's going to send it to us. It's like almost sim really simple. So just try it. And if you have any issues while trying it out, send us a message on Slack. We would be happy to respond as soon as possible. Yeah. So we are past time already. And again, thanks everyone for coming. Hopefully we see you again next two weeks, April 30th, same time you would get the Zoom link added to the Meetup page and bring your friends along, solve the practice problems before next week. Next week, we're gonna be talking about, hmm, and I'm gonna check. <laughs> I forgot to watch. We are, I think it's tags and cues. Yeah, I think it's tags and cues, but I'll confirm, I'll put it on the Meetup. So, Please, please, please look at the repository. These are resources you can use to learn more about Ash tables today. And 
again if you have any question please let us know please drop it on the slack see don't feel shy to drop your questions on the slack channel don't worry about the fact that i don't know why other people don't like to drop their questions don't feel like because the space is empty or because you don't see anybody asking any question maybe i shouldn't ask my question please ask your questions we want to hear from you we are always happy to listen to you and to respond to your questions and with that we have done it again and done another awesome session <laughs> thanks i'm gonna stop